How can this still be happening? Some American-born Asians and Asian immigrants are not getting along. What's going on here? I'm shocked. There was a viral Reddit post saying, uh, why are ABC girls so mean to Fabi girls? Long story short, this girl's from China. She went to high school in America, but when she got to college, she felt like there was a, such a big disparity in treatment between ABC girls, American-born Chinese girls, her interactions with them, and then with other international students. She tried to join the CSA, which was mostly for ABCs, and she kept getting cut off in the interview, and she just feels very sensitive. She's like, I just felt like I was so wrong for being who I am, and and I started taking a student job at the religious center and I saw a lot of Muslim students come in and my other co-workers would get so excited when they met another person from Sudan and like try to bring them in and acculturate them to the American culture and she felt like oh, I never got that experience myself what's going on there's just such a disparity between the two groups ABCs versus fobs let's talk about it guys we've talked about this on the channel before so if you're ready for this discussion please hit that like button right now but you know what ABCs and fobs could agree on small sauce this might bridge the gap possibly hopefully small check it out selling everywhere Real quick, I want to say this. I believe all of her details. I do think she's telling the story a little bit one-sided and possibly from a sensitive perspective, but I don't doubt the things that she says happened in this post actually happened. Yeah. Because yeah. They, I've seen them with my own eyes. No, I, I know what she's saying, and I believe, let, let, take it for face value, I believe her, but let me just give you some possible reasons real quick before we get into the comment section because I thought there's some good insight there. I would say, number one, I think she could be being sensitive and it could be misinterpreted. There could be a language barrier, boom. But let's just be honest, not all American-born Chinese are good ambassadors. They're not all nice people. They're also insecure in themselves. They're trying to find their way through America and they and, feel like the FOB student threatens them. And it. let's be honest, particularly, I think this happens with all Asian groups. I'm talking about Korean, Vietnamese, Filipino. I think that this split ex uh, exists all amongst all of them but amongst chinese the disparity might be even larger due to the geopolitical relationship yeah. due to being chinese not being considered yeah. cool it, it, it creates a even wider chasm i mean think of how different a second generation hong kong knees girl is to a first generation girl who just came from like northern china like that's or, like, or she could even be like third or fourth yeah. gen. She could be fifth gen from the gold rush. I'm just saying that already there's like, there are cultural differences. So there has to be some common ground found. And then also sometimes there are like well-off FOB students who kind of look down on the ABCs and that starts some tension, but usually they won't even interact with the ABCs. So I don't those think are, Those are like the rich four or die yeah, FOB. This is not who this girl is, obviously. She, this girl may also, and I'm not saying that she is or isn't, because honestly, this is the internet. We do not know the details. That's why it's so hard to really like actually make a final conclusion on it. But she might not be considered one of the cool FOBs, right? That can right, like bridge right, the right. gap or whatever like sure. that. Who knows, man? Um, Andrew, what are your personal stories in terms of like, like you almost got rejected from CSA by FOBs in college for not being Chinese enough. Yeah, every CSA is different, but I would say this, like knowing, like I just think that it's really key that the FOB student and the American student, and by the way, when everybody, when I say FOB or FOB, I'm not, I don't mean it in a derogatory way. That's why, because I know we're going to get some comments about that. But when the FOB and the ABC student, they have to, they have to have some type of common activity, whether it's Maybe sometimes it's partying, but they have to align culturally on something, mm, right? Find points of alignment. Whether it's sports. Find or some common ground. Partying or some food or like cooking activity uh, or some type of classroom activity. Maybe they both are in pre-med and they right. find some common ground. But you have to have some common culture because there is going to be a cultural barrier. It is. It's okay to say that, right. that there's a slight cultural barrier. Right, right, right. And, uh, you know, that's why even sometimes at schools, Andrew, and we're just referring to the Chinese situation because we're more in tune with that or, like, know the most about that. There's a CSA at a school that's more for, like, ABCs and a CSSA that is more for, like, quote, unquote, like, the Fabi kids. Because, you know, how the student groups, Andrew, they kind of turn into gangs and maybe... You didn't fit into that particular gang of leadership. But I, I thought that was the CSA. That was the more American one. CSSA <laughs> is oftentimes for the Chinese grad students. But anyways, uh, 
Yeah, let's go into the comment section. Yeah, I think ultimately for me, real quick, I got to say my quick comment, though, is, is it comes down to sample size. You can meet people that you can relate to of any group of people, but you have to meet enough. But the thing is, most people in their life, Andrew, they just meet who they meet and base their judgment on a group based off that. But it's like you have no way of telling whether your particular sample size was scientifically large enough to be accurate. Right. Um, somebody said, deep down, you might remind them of the awkwardness of their own parents or parts of their cultural heritage that made them feel ostracized and stand out in opposition to their mainstream peers. You remind them of everything you are trying to distance themselves from in order to be accepted in white America. You remind them of everything that they hate about themselves. Les, I, I'm going to be very blunt, and this is going to sound mean, but if you are a shy, awkward immigrant, that's going to be tough for like a lot of American people to kind of embrace that. Right. But... There is a way if you're outgoing or fun or funny. Or if you're good at something like an activity that people really value. Right. right? There just has to be a way in. What's your way in? Right. You can't. I mean, maybe if you're really good at Genshin Impact in the cello, you can appeal to the crowd that likes that. But obviously, if the ABC crowd is more going uh, towards football and basketball and like Americanized things like uh, ABGs yeah. and Kevin Wynn things, a FOB may not have super high hit points in that section. So then where is the in? Like, where? how do you get your foot in the door to be valued? Right. Yeah. Um, Andrew, there is a whole Disney show on Disney Plus based around the book Jin Yang's American Born Chinese where the cousin character Chin Ki is the manifestation of the exact same shame that ABCs have. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I guess this is uh, pretty well documented, right? Um, somebody said, same in the Indian, Black, and Hispanic community. People born here were not very good to their people born abroad versus other, like, American-born second gens. I, I do think every community has some version of this. I do think that there is a lot of Chinese and there's a lot of recent Chinese immigrants. Um, so I would say, yes, I can see this happening amongst, like, African-American. Like, if there's an African immigrant versus a... Black American student, you know what I mean? Oh, like I saw. I heard, a ton of jokes. I heard a ton yeah. of jokes about that. Yeah, so that that does happen. I acknowledge. Somebody said those mean ABC girls were probably those like cool sorority girls. I mean, most of them are just mean in general. There are nice ABC girls, but just not the ones in sororities. I, I would say this: a lot of ABCs in college, especially they grew up in parts in towns that were super white and they were the only Asian kid. And then they go to college and they find other Asians there because uh, like all the, the college kind of pulls all the Asians from that area, right? right? From a radius. So now sometimes it's as simplistic as those ABCs just want to do American things, but with other ABCs and feel comfortable doing that. So I'm not saying they're just, just don't think that the CSA is built to like study Chinese culture, okay? It's really just like ABCs to feel together. Right, right. And I mean, this girl may feel a little entitled to like having been brought in and stuff like that. It's gonna be, of course, very different from the Sudan situation where it's like ethno-religious group. They went through a crazy war. You know what I mean? Like, of course, they're gonna feel tight together. Like right, right, right. the Chinese group is almost like the inverse of that situation. Like yeah. every detail is complete, you know, almost the reverse. Um, somebody saying, um, you know, I grew up as an ABC in New York's Chinatown and us and the fobs were always frenemies that would hang out together, but also pick on each other. But ultimately when we got older, we stopped hanging out with each other. So this, he was talking about how it was like a 50, 50 thing. Mm. Um, how much do you think it is <laughs> that the fobs don't like the ABCs too? Yeah, I think it can be both. It could be both, you know, and, uh, cause you know, sometimes the fobs are like comparatively, it depends on what tier they came over at. They're almost like the rich majority of where yeah. they're almost like the rich bros or rich girl, it material, it girls of where they're from. But I, I, I wouldn't assume that every fob wants to be Americanized and wants to hang out with ABCs. Sometimes those fobs are just happy being amongst themselves and that's fine. Right, right, right. Somebody was saying, uh, I don't know. I, I'm an ABC and I lived in Taiwan for 11 years. I have a hard time thinking of a single time anybody there ever treated me bad for being ABC. So it's not 50-50. It's true that we are more bad to them than they're bad to us. Uh, this person was saying like, yeah, but I think it varies country to country. I, I know that b being an ABC in Taiwan, it definitely is like more elevated than even being an ABC in China. Mm -hmm. 
to be on mainland. Um, somebody said whiteness is the currency of popularity in the Midwest. And long story short, it is the currency of popularity and attention. And we don't want to associate with people who are going to bring our currency down. Right, right, right. Um, but then some people were bringing up examples like a fob from China, Andrew Jackson, Hu, who accumulated a ton of Midwestern cred mm. by playing D1 football, even though he still has a very thick accent. Right, so, right, right. So is it that is it just like the act of who they are, but it's like literally just the difference in behavior and interest. I think it's not really the accent. I don't even think it's always the language barrier. Sometimes it's just how you guys are acting. And because Jackson Hu has this kind of like American sports bravado, this football enthusiasm, this charisma, he's well, going to well, be- would, You would say it's it, probably, well, statistically kind of rare, right? Yeah, it's more Americanized, even though he speaks it with an accent, he's still more Americanized than a lot of Asian Americans. You right. know? Well, because he, ca he, he captures the American spirit. Yeah, because he understands football, and football is like the most American sport I can think of. Right. It's very outgoing. It's very gregarious. Yeah. It's very brutal in some ways, but mm -hmm. also you shake hands afterwards. Um, they're, they're just this, this whole post caused an outpour of people's like just really long stories. You know, people who spend five years overseas, 10 years in America. So many people were arguing about it. Um, you know, is there just any concrete way to make sense of this situation? A lot of people are like, oh, it's 50-50. It's not 50-50. It's on the Asian Americans to extend the olive branch. It's on the fobs to understand that they need to assimilate more before the Asian Americans extend that olive branch. And, you know, it just, the threads just kept going and going. Yeah. Uh, listen, we made, what, 12 years ago, we made a video called, what is it? Uh, Don't Hate Fobs. Don't Hate Fobs. That was one of our first videos we ever made on our channel, guys. You know what? I don't even know if I want to pop up the thumbnail, but if you guys want to search for it, go search for it. It's still it's still live. But I think to reiterate some of the things that we had talked about in that um, in that video, it's like one ABCs need to have more empathy. I'm not saying you have to be best friends and you have to accept all behavior, but a little bit more empathy for immigrant kids, like immigrants. They have to because those are like your parents. It's like you imagine if these people were like your parents then you have to have some empathy for your parents, right? right. You, it would have been helpful if your parents, your Fabi parents came to America and met some helpful Asian Americans right during that time, right? So that's number one. Number two, I think the Fob kids and the immigrants need to understand that if you are doing everything and you're not trying to be a little bit more American, it is going to be tough to get very close to other Asian Americans. Yeah. It will be tough. Yeah. And I, that's, that's on you partially. Yeah. It's you, both sides. Yes. It's both sides because I'm not going to lie. I know some really rich fobs and they still stand in front of the elevator when people are trying to get out and they try to make people squeeze through this like tiny yeah. little crack. And I'm like, bro, I get it. You never got taught elevator etiquette growing up. And plus you guys are the richest people where you're from. So you could just act however you want, but you can't do that. You're not making yeah. a lot of friends standing in front of the exactly. elevator when the elevator opens. Exactly. I understand because there could be a language barrier. A lot of international students, they're not very friendly or like you know, bright eyes. Some like, are, some hey, are, but some are and some aren't like, you know, the ones that aren't, but back to the ABCs, because I want to say two for the ABCs, one for the fobs. Cause I think there is a little bit more responsibility on the American ones. I'm like, you got to just be a better job of being an ambassador. You can't be so insecure in yourself and always being like, Oh, I'm just trying to be accepted. Oh, there's a fob. They're acting funny. They're eating fish and rice that they brought from home. That's gross. That makes me feel less of an American. Like, you can't feel that way. Yes, yes. You I, can't be so insecure because you, we have to be better ambassadors. You know, I saw this guy downstairs. We have this, like, lounge in our building, and he was eating spicy uh, mala xiao. You know, like the Which crawfish, Which is very... Right? It smells strong. Yeah, the, it has the wuxiang the spice on it. Yeah. And I went to... You know, I, and I was, we were with uh, a group of people from basketball, you know, white, black people, some Asians, but very Americanized Asians as well. But I went down there and I was just like, oh man, you guys are eating mala xiao? Let me take a look. And he's yeah. like, oh yeah, you want one? And I was like, oh man, I, I can't get one right now. I'm like eating over here at this American food because we're watching the game. But I still respected it. Yeah. I didn't go against it. Yeah. I and didn't go I, against it because I, I went over. I was curious. I said the name in Chinese. We spoke a little bit. We mostly speak yeah. English, but I'll throw some Mandarin in there just to let yeah, yeah, yeah. people know, you know, we've... we've no, and I, I think that's a good way of like having a fun, friendly ping, acknowledging that they are eating a food. They're eating spicy crawfish in the lounge, which it's not against the law to do that, but it probably is making that room smell like spicy crawfish. Right. Right. Now... 
you don't need to tell them to stop because maybe you don't mind, but acknowledging like, hey, you guys are eating spicy crawfish. Wow. It's, it's, yeah, I just good. went over. I looked. Oh, yeah, you yeah. got Yang Rou Chuan over here. And that okay, also man, helps. That's all and good. that helps the American guys that you're with understand what they're eating because maybe the American guys were kind of like, yo, what are they eating? And then you're like, oh, they're eating crawfish. You know, it's it's like Cajun crawfish, except just like the Chinese Cajun yeah, version. But then when you say it, you don't say it bashfully or yeah. in a shame way. You're just like, it's lit. I mean, that's so they, ABCs, they're getting lit yeah. right now. So that's why ABCs need to understand a holistic Chinese culture better. And they need to be more confident that they can complement and understand Chinese culture. And, and be so the bridge. They, and be the bridge to both sides. Yeah, because you're the American one and you understand what it's like here. So you are given a little bit more responsibility on this. I don't think it's 50-50. I give responsibility 65% or 60% on the ABCs, 40% on the FOBs. And, and let's be honest too, though. I wouldn't say that like all the FOBs, for lack of a better word, they all they they, they don't all have the same attitude. No, like they don't want to be friendly great, too. Some of them have a great attitude. Some of them have the yeah. middle one. And listen, some of them have a horrible attitude. Listen, some of these FOB students are stupid too. Like are rude too. Just like ABCs can be stupid and rude. So yeah. everybody has the rude ones. Anyways, guys, let us know in the comments down below what you think, right? Yeah. I mean, I think there was a lot of macro takeaways, but as far as this girl's specific situation, you know, without game film, we'll never know what the true thing, you know, what the true root of her exact situation is. But it, it sparked a lot of good comments. I, I guess, like, my last advice to this girl, if she's watching this, or anybody out there who's wondering, like, what can I do? What can I do if I'm an international student? I guess you do somehow need to show that you are being a little bit more Americanized in some aspect of yeah, your life. Because I do see the ABCs want to be friends with like, I mean, especially the more open-minded ABCs with the cool fobs. You, yeah. see, you do see that. Dude, I think there's nothing about them being an international student that makes me not want to be friends with them. It's if we culturally can align on things and share things together, that's great. Yeah. We can be friends no matter what culture you're from. But if we find it hard to find common ground and mutual respect for each other, then it's tough. Yeah. I always ask people, you got a Louis jacket? I'll ask about your Louis jacket. That's a dope jacket. Oh, man, you've been lifting. How are you lifting? But if you give me like a really negative response or really like brush it off, yeah. then I'm just like, oh, okay. Well, then yeah. that's it. Yeah. Just recognize when a real person is trying to reach out and be friendly. Anyways, guys, let us know in the comments down below what you think. ABCs, Asian Americans versus international students of any type of Asian. It doesn't have to be Chinese, but... Obviously, we're just a stories about a Chinese person today. So let us know in the comments down below. Check out Smala Sauce, the bridge in between. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.